Welcome back tech friends, my name is Gareth, this is Tech Check. Today I'm checking out three all-in-ones. Yes, they're all 360 mil, they're all different prices, but my question is, which one do you buy? This one at 100, this one at 170, 180, this one at 330. So this is the aim of the video, guys. We're gonna hook each one of these up to a brand new 7800X3D, we're going to do a series of tests. I'm not going to bore you with regards to the installation, but we're going to find out, is there a difference between £100 and 330 Yes, quite clearly, some have got LCD screens, some haven't, so on and so forth. But purely on performance, is £230 the difference? Or would you settle for something right in the middle? Let's find out. If you are interested in any one of these three all-in-ones, I'll leave links for them down in the description. So as you can see there, guys, a quick overview, 360 mil Arctic liquid freezer three, three installed 120 mil fans, absolutely fantastic, all daisy chained up. And then the great thing about it is these particular cables as well. There's only actually two, one for RGB, one for the actual uh, four pin PWM connection. We have a housing that hides this little bit of mess so you won't actually see any of that and you also get a box of goodies with all the mounting hardware inside. There we have it guys, Liquid Freezer 3, fully installed. Space and minutes guys, if you struggle, Arctic's got some fantastic video tutorials, QR code, you saw me, I took out the normal AM5 brackets and installed four screws, put it on, two more screws to tie it down, a little bit of thermal paste, 12 screws at the top as normal, well away, five minutes, all good. So as you know, I took out that 4090 and the 7950X3D, We've popped in a 7800X3D, but I want to give a special mention to Matt at Coeda who sent me out a Samsung 990 Pro and this Zotac 4070 Ti Super. And this is actually their Trinity Black Edition. Now I know this is a white build, this is a black card, it's not going to matter it's still gonna look fantastic. Massive fan guys of Samsung drives. If you watched any of the builds over the last two years, you'll see 970 Evos, 980s, 980 Pros, 990s. Massive, massive fan. Three reasons. Primarily, they're not the cheapest, but what you do get is huge performance and massive reliability. And when you're storing so much data on these, reading, writing, Samsung, I've got you covered. On to the most exciting bit, Zotac Gaming Trinity Black Edition. 16 gigs worth of VRAM here as well, guys. So if you're 1080p or 1440p gaming, you're gonna experience some unreal FPS. Absolutely stunning. We're gonna get some RGB, which is gonna come across here. It's got a nice metal Back plate with our cut through design or pass through design at the back. We have three display ports and one HDMI 2.1. Its footprint is really nice as well. None of these huge three card slot massive monsters. And that's why I thought I would use this in this build because this is a, a B650M motherboard. The PCIe slot times 16 is quite far down and it's not a lot of room. This is gonna fit in perfect. So we're finally at that point where we can run a benchmark or two. We've downloaded Windows, we've updated the BIOS, the chipset, the GPU drivers, we've downloaded everything. We've also put on here Cinebench R23 and hardware monitor as well. As you can see, the desktop is totally empty to give us the best possible results that we can. We're running this RTX 4070 Ti Super with the 7800X3D with 6000 megahertz RAM that's got AMD Expo turned on. 
no overclocked CPU running standard BIOS uh, settings as well. Let's run a couple of single core and then multi-core tests on Cinebench. We'll monitor the results on hardware monitor and then we'll chuck in the next only one and do it all again. We're going to rip this one out, get the Corsair one in. Again guys, one of my favourite all-in-ones, I've got one, the last three builds is incorporated this new IQ Link 360 H150i LCD screen as well. But we're not talking about what they look like, we're talking about how much they cost versus how well they perform. All three 120mm fans come installed onto the radiator itself. If you've not seen before, it's got inputs on the actual radiator. We've got already applied thermal paste, and this is lovely in black as well. There we go, and we're gonna put the radiators in exactly the same as we did before. All we've got to do is drop this on to our CPU. Then we can lock it down with the four thumb screws. So that's all of our connections there. So we want to put this one into here. This needs to go to a USB 2 on our uh, motherboard. This one needs to go to our CPU header on our motherboard. This needs to go to a USB 2 header on our motherboard. And we also need a six pin PCIe power cable for this one. That's our CPU header on. What we can use is the splitter cable that Corsair really handily uh, provide. So again, guys, we'll run these Cinebench tests, monitor it via hardware monitor, three on the single core, three on the multi-core. Not supposed to look pretty, but everything's actually working. So let's run these single cores first. So I'm not going to bore you to death guys, I'm going to sit here and go through two more of these and then we'll jump onto the multi-core ones. Results are in for the Corsair Link. Let's get this one out and get the last one in. So this one is one from Zygmatech. This is their Froza 02360 LCD screen, 3 RGB fans, 360mm cooler. Let's get it installed. We need to go ahead and put our standard brackets back in place. We can attach our CPU header. We've got a USB 2 that needs to go down the back and onto the front. And then we've got this plethora of cables that we need to hook up to this RGB hub. Start with the single cores, three single runs, and then three more runs on the multi-core. Let's do it. Again, guys, I'm not going to bore you because this takes on average about seven minutes to complete each one. So I'll be back very shortly. So 20 minutes later, let's start the multi-core runs. In first was Arctic. It had an average of 62.3 degrees uh, running the single core. The Corsair had an average of 66.96 degrees and totally surprised me, the Zygmatech had an average of 63.93. In terms of the multi-core ones, Arctic had an average of 81 degrees, Corsair had an average of 85.1. Again, a big surprise, but Zygmatech had an average of 81.5. Yeah, I think I knew what to expect. I knew that the Liquid Freezer 3 would perform phenomenally well. And guys, I don't know how much they are now, between 80 and 100 pounds. Yes, it's lacking the LCD screen, but it's got the RGB fans. Very, very, very good cooler. Um, and in all honesty, if you've got anything like a 7800X3D, you're looking for RGB and easy connectivity, fantastic. Literally five minutes to install. That is the go-to one to keep those temperatures nice and low. On the other hand, if you don't care about money and you just want it to be integrated into the rest of your setup, like the Link system's designed for, then Corsair, it's four or five degrees, guys. And 
in all honesty, when we're talking about four or five degrees, it's neither here nor there. There is a lot of tolerance here. I could have changed the fan settings, made them a little bit louder. We could have put the side panel on. That might have had a little bit of a difference with regards to the bottom and side fan intakes. It was the same for all of them. So new thermal paste, put them all in the same, run them at the same speeds. These were the results. So there's the answer. Arctic comes out top. Zygmatek came second and third was Corsair. Guys, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, smash that like button. Sorry I've not got as much energy. It's half past two in the morning. So I'm going to wish you a lovely weekend and I'll see you in the next one.